All right, all you guys that like your FN57, now you got a perfect pair to go with your 57. Here we go. <laughs> Get out of here. You too. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We've got a very, very, very extremely new uh, pistol to show you today here. This is a CMMG guard, but this one is chambered in 5.7 by 28. So those of you that are a big fan of your FN57 pistol, it does take FN57 magazines, okay? Really cool, we're running a KG made swarm on here. This is all titanium suppressor. Um, this is the same suppressor that we ran on the meltdown video on the CMMG 22 upper, and it held up really well. Uh, it is rated for 5.7, so we're gonna run it on this. Uh, we got the burnt bronze finish. It is a radially delayed blowback, uh, just like a lot of the other guards that we've worked with in the past. So it does use a rotating bolt and a radially delayed blowback system, uh, which is really cool. Where I see a gun like this doing really well for people is someone that prefers the ergonomics of an AR, but with the caliber of a 5.7, it's really handy for that. Um, you know, you get 20 rounds of 5.7 in your hand. Um, you know, they did test this gun a lot with the 30 round uh, magazines, basically the extent, I don't know if it's just the extensioner you can get or if that ProMag makes a 30 round magazine. I think they were having some reliability issues um, with the 30 round magazines. So they ship with two 20 round uh, pro mags. All right, and I do have some regular FN magazines that we're gonna run through the gun as well, just to test it out. Um, you know, pretty much straight up AR ergonomics. We got a blade pistol stabilizing brace on here. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, I like 5.7. I've always been a big fan of the P90. P90 is a good, uh, good setup. It's nice and compact. Uh, it does a lot of cool things. This is definitely a lot easier to suppress and probably a little bit better to suppress being a readily delayed blowback. And uh, it's got a light handling characteristic to it, uh, a nice uh, profile to it because of the uh, lower capacity magazines give it a nice handling characteristic. I've got this one topped off with the TA-33 and this is sitting in a Geisley Super Precision mount. Uh, but other than that, she's pretty much good to go, running well. Um, 5.7 is a cool little cartridge, guys. I mean, it's a 40 grain bullet getting out of there pretty quick, uh, kind of like a 22 Magnum on steroids, I guess you could call it, or close to the performance of some 22 Magnums. Uh, there's always that age old argument of, uh, you know, what's better, a 22 Magnum or, or 5.7 by 28. I, I would have to say the fact that some rim fires can be really finicky. I think the 5.7 by 28 is, is a better option for somebody that's wanting a small bore cartridge that's not a 223, kind of an intermediate small bore cartridge. We're running Federal, okay. There's two different barrel lengths that this gun comes in. This one's an 8-inch barrel. You can also get it in a Banshee configuration with a 5-inch barrel, okay? It's threaded half by 28, so our can's just living right on there on half by 28 threads. Uh, you've got uh, basically M-lock rails on the bottom and sides, so spots for your M-lock attachments, and you've got a pick rail going across the top. Standard charging handle. Pretty cut and dry, but pretty awesome, okay? Let's shoot the gun a little bit more, see how it runs. Uh, we're getting just shy of 2,000 feet per second velocity out of this Federal ammunition out of the 8-inch uh, barrel. Now, that's pretty comparable to what the P90 is offering. And we are going to shoot this out with some longer ranges just for fun here in a bit. So much fun to shoot. Oh, that bottle's empty. Thinking I know I'm getting it. Yeah, buddy, that thing is like a laser beam. It's one thing I like a lot about the 5.7 cartridge in general. Very flat shooting, very accurate, and very low recoil, which allows you very fast follow-up shots. Um, and you know, the prices on 5.7 ammo have gone down quite a bit. Um, I remember when 5.7 ammo was $35, $40 a box because just not a lot of people were shooting it. But I found that I think on this federal stuff, the American Eagle stuff, 
I want to say I paid like 16, 17 bucks a box for 50. So you're getting below, well below 45 ACP cost in terms of the ammo. It's not bad at all. All right. Yep, stacks them right in there. Headshots on the gopher. Yeah, buddy. Not bad at all. Somebody to stuff a few mags here. Give me them bullets. Give me them bullets. All right. Uh, we are probably uh, here in a bit. We're going to go to the top of the hill and take some kind of longer range shots. Um, where I see a pistol like this coming in really handy is from a CQB aspect or from a personal defense weapon uh, aspect. This is a great pistol to keep in the car as a truck gun or whatever uh, you want to do. It'll definitely do that. And of course, uh, my, my screw shot loose on my mount, mount. Here I am wondering what in the heck that noise is. And my, my screws work themselves loose on my mount because I didn't torque them down that well earlier like a dummy. And the thing is still <laughs> hitting exactly where I'm aiming. I'm such a moron. That's okay. We're going to keep going, though, because the gun is shooting just fine, just like it is. That's a, that's a rookie move on my part, isn't it? I'll say. <laughs> yeah, but it's still shooting, though. Um, but one thing I can say about the 5.7 the in terms of its portability and use is you get fast recovery, fast follow-up shots, really high velocity, flat shooting. So at intermediate ranges especially, you can zero for like 100 yards or even 50 yards. And the gun's going to be relatively flat out to ranges that you really probably wouldn't want to shoot at something anyway. I mean, personal defense range is quite close. Uh, I see this as being a really handy option for something like that. Just make sure you tighten your dang scope down. Uh, not like I did. I made a real rookie move there. That's okay. All right, this is the FN mag. Dang FN mags. <laughs> <laughs> I made a funny. All right, ho, 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 ho. we're gonna keep shooting. <laughs> Not bad. All right, that suppressor's working well, ain't it? Mm-hmm. God, I feel feel like a moron for not tightening those screws down. I've got a um, I've got a adjustable wrench. You can snug them down real quick. Nah, that's cool. I'll snug them down before we'll, we shoot we'll, long we'll, range. We'll, sn we'll snug them down before we get to long range. We'll reconfirm zero. That's a uh, dumb move on my part, guys. I apologize for that. Despite that, I mean the gun's holding a zero. That's the craziest thing. I mean that scope is like wobbling around on top and it's still holding a zero. All right. Dead on? I've got brass like flying right in front of my face. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's running well. It's got a last round bolt hold open, which is kind of cool. So basically, whether it's an FN produced magazine, uh, that's enough. I'll just run these two mags. We'll cinch the uh, scope mount down like any normal person would do, any smart person would do before we go back up, uh, up the hill. The swarm's doing a good job. The gun's holding up well. I would love to see what one of these is all about with the five inch barrel. Oh yeah. I would imagine that, uh, so with a five inch barrel and a five seven, I wonder if, if it would be a little quieter with a can or if it would mm, be a little louder. It'd probably be a little bit louder. Probably a little louder, huh? And I wonder, I don't think the velocity gains going from five to eight inch are really a heck of a lot to, to scoff over. I mean. I don't know, I've never uh, I've never chronographed like a, a tiny, yeah. like AR five seven upper or whatever. And you know, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. You know, this is cool with the FN five seven mags, yeah. but. It would be neat to have like an AR-57 upper with like a 10 inch barrel or something. So we've like been shooting there. this thing suppressed the whole time. I'll tell you what, since I've got the FN-57 with me, I'll just run a couple of mags through the 5.7 just so they can hear the uh, how loud it is compared. I mean, I know this is kind of a short barrel compared to the eight inch, but. You're gonna make me go find my ear pro. <laughs> yeah. Just one, one mag out of the 5.7. 
just so people know what we're talking about. Right. And I remember when these guns first came out, and I remember thinking it, it felt like shooting a toy, like it was a dart gun. Like it makes me feel like I'm a scientist shooting, I don't know, a baby seal with a dart to study it or something. Like it, it, it just doesn't <laughs> that's, feel. That's a heck of a visual. It, it doesn't feel like something that's lethal to me. I mean, trust me, I know it is, but the gun feels like a toy. All right, let's just take a few shots with the 5.7 pistol, just so we're comparing apples to apples here. All right, let's see if I can go for a headshot there. That's not shooting too bad at all. I haven't shot this gun in a while. There we go. <laughs> all right. Go over to the guard. Now, let's see how easier those headshots are now. Oh, no. no! I failed! Is that one of the Pro Mags? Uh, yes. Stovepipe. Whatever, it's just that one mag that it's not liking. I don't know. Factory mags uh, seem to be running just fine. All right, let's try again. No! No! <laughs> All oh, right. Ow, 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 ow. He's hot brass <laughs> landing in my hand. <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to tighten the scope mount down like normal human beings, and we're going to go up to the top of the hill and shoot this thing out to 300 yards and see if we can uh, drop some rounds in. What do you think? The reason I know it'll do it is because I've done it with the P90 before, but we're going to test it with this too, just because we can. Look at this crap. I'm such an idiot. Chalk that one. <laughs> I don't make mistakes often, guys, okay? But when I do, I screw up really, really bad. When he does, they're bigly. Yeah, but now, now here's the thing. To be fair, though, okay, that thing is still hold, holding a zero, working great. It's just so crazy, the forgiving nature of, of some things. I mean, so... That leads me to something that we've been wanting to do for a while, and I, and I want to just sort of tease about it before we go up the hill here. One, one concept that we've been talking about doing is removing components off of the AR and replacing it with like duct tape. Duct tape, and, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we'll see how much we can actually take off of this thing and still get it to work with duct tape. Like, oh, you don't need them, you don't need them stinking axis pins. Pull them out of there. Duct tape that receiver together. Stay tuned for that. I think you'll you'll find that well, I think a duct tape uh, scope mount is in order, Chad. <laughs> yeah, you see where this is going, boys and girls. Oh, yeah. Let's go up the hill and uh, have a little fun with this thing at long range, shall we? All right, guys, we moved up to the top of the hill. We're going to take some shots with a little uh, CMMG guard here and 5.7 out to 300 yards. See if that little pill can get out there and do some damage to some things. Now with a properly tightened scope mount this time. <laughs> <laughs> we did snug that thing up. I didn't have a torque wrench with me, but it's it's monkey tight. Probably tight enough. So just uh, confirm zero again. Zero to 100 yards with the uh, tip of the chevron here and the ACOG. So we're just going to play around and see where it's going. Eric's going to spot for me and just have a little bit of fun. Sure. Uh, one thing we did notice was the Pro Mags do not drop free. So even with a little bit of pressure on a full mag, you know, on the bottom of the bolt carrier, they don't drop free. But the FN mags do drop free. Kind of reminds me of like the difference between aftermarket Glock magazines and a real Glock mag. I mean, you get what you pay for. It's okay. So. All right. This thing is so neat. Uh, now uh, with my uh, PS90 with the 16 inch barrel, that bullet drops about a foot 
or so at about 300 to get in there. So your your mileage may vary okay. with the eight inch barrel. Do you have your uh, PS90 zeroed at 50 or 100? 100. 100. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start at 50. I'm just gonna walk my way out and see what happens. Go ahead. Got a little bit of wind out here, but not too bad. All right, Fine, 50 thing, yards. Man. I'm gonna aim for the bolt. Nice. Well, it stacks them right in there. All right, 100. Go for the head. Go for the head. Not bad. Cool. You put three right on top of each other, and one of them uh, opened it up to about an inch and a half. That's cool. Not you bad got, for 100 yards. You're going to yeah. go out to two now? Yeah, I am. And guys, something that Eric forgot to mention, this gun does not have a Geisley trigger in it. This is just a standard military spec trigger. So... <laughs> All right, let's see, 200. Imagine how much better it could shoot with the guys. Just uh, it? just aim at the top of the head on that D28 down there and see where it goes. I'm going to aim, let me aim dead on. I just want to see where it drops. All right, go ahead. Uh, Down in, way on the bottom. Way on the bottom, all right. I'm yeah, gonna, aim at the top of his head. All right, I'm going to pull it up to the top of the vertical post. Wind's blowing it, but go ahead, try a few more. That didn't hit though. Yeah, it hit. You sure? Yep. Good, you're in there. Yep. Oh, I can hear it now, yeah. Eh, probably about the size of a pie plate. Yeah. All right. About a 10 inch group. 250? Yeah, go out to 250. Hold right. about eight inches over top of his head. All right. Yep. Come on. Good. Triangulated about eight inch group. Not bad. It's not bad for a little bitty tiny zippy round. It's uh, it's getting down there. I mean, 40 grain pill moving almost 2,000 feet per second out there. Yeah. All right, just for fun, I got a few rounds left in this mag. I'm gonna shoot that gopher at 250. Or try Go ahead. To. You gotta aim about a foot over his head. That's fine, I got it. You hit the base. Hit the base, huh? Yeah. All right. Not bad. Now, another pro mag. All right. Go for. Right over top of his head. Just to the left of him. It's, it's all right in there. You're kind of all around him. Ah! Yeah. I guess the gopher is going to be elusive today. Why don't you go out to three now? Okay. Three hundo. Right in the middle. Keep going. Good. Good. All right, hang on. Those five shots inside of about an eight-inch circle. At I'll 300 that. yards. And right. that's with a good wind blowing. That ain't too bad for no, a four-grainer. Not bad at all. All right. You can definitely tell that there's a lot more trajectory versus the 16-inch barrel, though. Yep. That shorter barrel, you do lose a bit of velocity. All right. I'm going to shoot that, or I'll attempt to shoot the popper. It's a little bit bigger than a gopher. That eight-inch on the right there. Go. Go four. Go for it. Right over the top. Okay. Right over the top, about a foot. Right over the top, bring it down. Ah, I saw that Still one. Still high. Right over the top, bring it down some more. You're shooting right over the top of it. Now you're just off to the right. Bring your hold over to the left a bit, the wind's catching you. Yep, you're in there. Keep going. Wind caught it, bring it to the uh, hold over to the left a bit more. Oh, I realized what I was doing. I was using the 600 yard stadia instead of the 400 yard stadia on the top of the oh, gong okay. like like an idiot. That uh, that swarm sounds good on it from up here, especially Shoot. with a you know, wide open area out here. Oh man, it sounds really good. It sounds good from back here. Oh yeah. Cool. All right. All right, since I know kind of where I'm aiming, I'm just gonna shoot a few different things. I'm gonna yeah. go out. Try that coyote out if you think you can get past the tree. 
Yeah, I got, let's see, one more mag, and then I've got some of the little V-Maxes. Yeah, that's the, the actual V-Max ammo. Yeah, that's the FN ammo, right? Yeah. There's like 11 rounds that we found in the uh, in the bin there with all the Federal ammo, so I might shoot it just for the heck of it. Cool. All right, hang on. You want me to shoot the Coyote real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Mm, again. Hang on. Let me, let me uh, lighten the uh, mood here. All right, so let's see. Where were they hitting on the uh, eight inch or the twenty-two inch round over there? Um, just slightly low and right of center. Low and right of center. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yep, heart shot. You got him. Good. Keep doing that. Excellent accuracy. Who said this couldn't be a varmint rifle? Man, um, out of all, all of those shots you shot at the uh, at the coyote, you only missed once, and all of them except for one are all in the in the kill zone. Cool, man. So they all would have been heart and lung shots. All right, go for it again. I got a few rounds left. Yeah, two fifty or three. 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 Just to the just left, left of him. Of him. Yeah. You got him. Tink. Freaking gopher. You got him. Just to the right. That wind caught it. Yep. Right in the neck. Right over the top of his head. Not bad for plinking ammo. Shoot. You ought to shoot a, shoot a group of that FN ammo on the big plate and see where it's at. Yeah, let me see. Cheat it maybe a little bit higher so it's a different point of impact. Uh, at 50 at. or 100? At 300. Oh, at 3? Yeah, I mean, inside of 100 yards, it's going to stack well, just about any I mean, round. I've, I've, got, I've got a pretty good idea of where to aim. I can aim at that uh, half-size D28 over there on the left. So Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Look, I'll put them on that D28 on the left. Now, this is the uh, blue tip. This is still 40 grain, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. For, 40 grain VMAX. Right. 40 to VMAX. Maybe it'll have the same point of impact. Yep. Was that over the top? Uh, yeah, it was a little hotter. Oh, wow. Okay. Dang. I think right. you might be hitting the tree, man, to be honest with you. All right, hang on a sec. Let me go back to the other target. Yeah, you're going to have to. I think you hit the tree limb. All right, look, I'm going to aim with a 400 meter hold. That's just fine. dead center and just see what happens. Yeah, go ahead. I see where the other hits are at, so you should be fine. Uh, Well, right, th right in there with the other ones. <laughs> okay, well, look, I'm going to shoot a little bit lower. Keep going. Nice. A little better? Yeah, probably about a six or eight inch group. All of the rounds went all in exactly the same spot. So all, the federal rounds and the FN rounds are in like a cool about an eight inch circle. That um for that ammo's yards definitely, and heavy wind, that's not bad. Well the ammo's definitely hotter because I mean I was actually having to aim about a foot lower. Yeah. At that range. So all right, one more mag and then we'll be done. All right, cool. What a neat little rifle. Pistol. Good little good little walking around setup. All right. A walkabout. Walkabout pistol. <laughs> ah, let's see. Yep. You're in there. <laughs> Real accurate. <laughs> Dang headwind picked up and was like, Meow. yep. All right, let's see. Definitely a difference in the trajectory between 16 to an 8.
Going for the eight inch. Yeah, yeah. Try yeah. to finish it on the eight. Just to the right. Wind catching you. Yep. Ah! It's in there. Dang. What Come a cool way. little setup. I think that's it. Man. Not bad. What an awesome, awesome little gun. I can't say enough good things about it. It's really cool that CMMG is, you know, working to put so many different calibers in the guard system. That radially delayed system is is really, really revolutionary in the AR world for pistol caliber carbines and such as that. It just, it, <laughs> it does some really neat things, especially when you add a suppressor to it. That little bit of extra delay back there really gives you less uh, noise coming out of the ejection port. So these guard guns are typically quite a bit quieter than their just standard straight blowback counterparts, which is really cool. But the little KG Swarm is working out really well. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just want to say a special thanks to all of our supporters on Patreon and all the guys who support us over there on Man Cans. And also those of you who support us by buying t-shirts and other paraphernalia on Force from Freedom. We really appreciate what you guys do. You do keep us running and we couldn't do what we do without you. So stay tuned guys. We've got a lot more content coming down the pipeline. Until next time, see ya.